Hi, I'm Christine Cushing, TV chef and cookbook author, and I love everything Mediterranean. Today, I'm super excited to be sharing this recipe with you because this happens to be my mom's personal recipe that she has been perfecting for years, so you're gonna love it. What it is, is spanakopita, and in Greek, that just means spinach pie. It's a little triangle. In our house, they're so popular that they're actually known as just triangles. Everybody knows what the triangle means, so it's the holy grail. I wanna show you what you need for this. A couple of eggs, some scallions or green onions, fresh dill, which we'll talk about, little bit of butter, green onions, blanched and squeezed chopped spinach, feta cheese, real Greek stuff, little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some pepper, and last but not least, filo dough, which I'll explain all what it is and where you can get later. So, Georgia, my mom, makes the best spanakopitas. And let's just get this straight. So, a lot of people call it spanakopita, but in Greek it's called spanakopita. Just so you want to look with it, spanakopita is the way to go. Or triangles, just call them triangles, it's good. All right, now what I'm gonna do is uh, just saute my green onions and dill. Okay, so my pan is on the stove. I got it at medium heat, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there, and I just wanna saute my green onions and dill and the spinach. So let me tell you a little bit about dill. Dill can be a bit challenging to find fresh, but in Greece, we love dill. I have no idea why, but they put dill in everything. Huge difference between this dill and the dried dill. So best bet is an ethnic store. They tend to have it, and it just adds this really specific flavor that's not common. So fresh dill, a must in Spanakopita. Green onions, you totally know about, and I'm chopping them just like this, finely, okay? Part of the challenge that I used to have as a kid when I started to make these little triangles is they would get soggy. Until I saw my mom make it, what she does is she washes the spinach, blanches it, and then that just means to cook in a little bit of boiling water for about a minute, and then you keep that green color and you squeeze all the juice out of it. So you see how this spinach is nice and dry and super bright green? That's what you want to do before you start. Pan's nice and hot. See the sizzle? That's what I want to hear. Adding the spinach, and this is just a couple of minutes, really, just to get those flavors all melded in. A little bit of cracked black pepper. And no salt. Today, no salt. Because we're going in with feta. Quality of your feta is really gonna affect the final triangles. So now a couple of eggs. So I just wanna beat these two eggs. And that's all I wanted to do to the green onions, dill, and spinach. Now if you could smell this right now, it really is the reason that I saute it, or that my mom sautés it. You get that freshness from the herbs and the dill, but you really lock in that flavor, and it just adds another layer. If you put everything in raw, we'll never have the same taste. Okay, I'm loving that. Just gonna cool it down slightly while I add the feta and the eggs, because I don't wanna cook the eggs. Okay, so everything comes together now in a medium-sized bowl would be the best. Now, my mom is known everywhere for her triangles, and it's all about the little nuances. She's really perfected this, and I'm so excited that I have sort of followed her along, because with Greek moms, pfft, recipe does not exist. Honest to God. She'll be like, I don't know, two eggs, whatever. She's just so not technical. But anybody that we go to, if they, we go to their house and we taste them, never the same as Georgia's. So Georgia's should be internationally known for her triangles. Now I'm gonna add my sauteed spinach mixture with the green onions and the dill. Look how green that is. I mean, can you stand it? Super green. I've had some people say that they use frozen boiled spinach. It can work, but 
If you got fresh spinach, go with the fresh. So let's talk phyllo because you may not have seen it. It's something that I use a lot in the Greek markets. Probably your best bet, I found these in most grocery stores, but if you go to an ethnic market, an ethnic grocery store, more likely to find it, plus they sell a lot more of it. It comes in a package and it's generally in the freezer. Okay, and what Georgia likes to do, she came up with this trick probably about 15 years ago and it's worked beautifully. She actually cuts her phyllo with the little package. It comes in sort of a wax paper, just like a log, and she cuts it with the paper on, that way it guards it from fraying and getting all dry while she's making her 500 other triangles, because she makes 500 at a time. But for you and me, we just need a small amount. Okay, so she cuts it in about, I would say two inches, that's your optimal triangle size. So I think I'm gonna go with that. And while I'm making these, I wanna keep this stuff nice and tightly wrapped so it stays moist. So I'm gonna lay down four of these guys, single layer, and then I'm gonna butter each one and lay a second sheet on top. Now, a question that may be coming to your mind is, why not olive oil, since this is something very Greek? And that's a very good question. Uh, you could go with olive oil. In fact, my mom does go with olive oil. But I really wanted to bring out that sweetness that the butter does. And I went that way. So either way is good. Mm, butter. Okay, this can tend to happen, but you just line them all up, not to worry. It's kind of the best thing once you come up with your own techniques to make this fast. It's very, very rewarding when you actually get it done. And this is not the time to be a conservative. You got to be liberal when you're making these. Lots of butter or olive oil because you want that puffiness and crispiness in between each layer. And the butter and the olive oil does that. Okay, and then second one on top of each. I like to make about four at a time. So now I wanna take about a teaspoon, actually a half a teaspoon on each triangle, and I lay it right down in the corner here. The biggest mistake that I used to make is I filled them too much and they would just explode in the oven. So you're looking for this small amount because these are nice and delicate. And then they keep their shape when they're baking. Okay, so just like that. Now I'm gonna turn them into triangles. So what I wanna do here is some Euclidean geometry. You want right angle triangles. Okay, so fold it over 45 degrees. 45 degrees, and then you just keep that going until you've solved the mathematical equation. Okay, so these are going in the oven. 350, 15 minutes, we're gonna check on them then. Okay, so this is about 20 to 22 minutes at 350, puffed, golden, crispy. My mom would be super proud. Okay, so I want to make a plate up for you. Look at these crispy spanakopitas, a little bit of dill. Georgia's spanakopita, hot out of the oven. I'm Christine Cushing. See you next time.